Be the master of your own universe using nothing but a little bit of YAML. That's right. You can build, deploy, even create the resources that your application runs on using GitHub Actions. Check it out on on.net. Hello and welcome to another episode of On.NET. We're continuing our series of DevOps for .NET developers. If you're working with DevOps, an important aspect is continuous integration and deployment. Chances are you've been working with GitHub, and today we're going to talk about a feature of GitHub that helps with that. But before I get started, I'm your host, Jeremy Lickness, and I'm here with the rock star of DevOps himself, Abel Wang. Abel, welcome. Thank you so much, Jeremy. So happy to be on your show again. So I understand you do a little bit with DevOps at uh, Microsoft. A little bit, you know, a, a little bit of everything with DevOps. That's, that's really my role. So what I do is I'm the principal cloud advocate and also the DevOps lead here at Microsoft. So all things devops -y, that's kind of what I do. Well, a huge part of DevOps that I think we're going to see just explode based on preliminary feedback is this new feature called GitHub Actions. And I understand you have some something to share with us about that. Yeah, GitHub Actions is super cool, right? So recently, GitHub announced that they've created a brand new workflow engine that they called Actions V2. And with this workflow engine, you're able to create all sorts of automation inside of GitHub. So of course, me being a DevOps guy, I immediately thought CICD. How can I use Actions, GitHub Actions, for my CICD? So what I figured we should do is just kind of walk through an example of CICD using GitHub Actions for a .NET application stored in GitHub. That sounds great. Let's take a look at that. OK, so here's my GitHub repo, and it's holding the Tailwind Traders website, which I'm sure you're intimately familiar with, Jeremy. I love the Tailwind Traders website. Yeah. It has been my constant companion for the past year and a half. Right, right, right. So I have this app running locally right now. Uh, here's lovely Tailwind Traders, and you know how it has that AI feature, right? So I can upload a picture of some type of hardware, and it'll go ahead and start shopping for it. So let's go ahead and see what happens. I'm going to upload a multi-tool. And what ends up happening is there's a bug. This is the screen that I get, right? There's no Arabs messaging. There's nothing at all. It's just broken. It just returns an empty, uh, uh, empty page back. Um, so I have to fix this, right? But what's weird is when I went to my production website, um, this is what I saw. I'm like, okay, that doesn't look good. Clearly something's not right. So I'm like, but wait a minute, I'm actually hosting this inside of Azure, right? So if I go into my Azure resource groups, hmm, let me refresh that really quickly. And yeah, so some dumb, some dummy came in here <laughs> and deleted all of my resources in my subscription, right? So that's not good. However, the way that I created my actions, I used DevOps best practices, including infrastructure as code. So in theory, all I need to do is fix my bug, check that code in, and it should just redeploy everything, including provisioning my infrastructure in Azure, and everything should just magically work. All right, so let's go ahead and do that. So the first thing we need to do is fix my code, right? And it's actually pretty simple. So let me bring up my code. And what we're gonna do is we will go ahead and make the changes. And instead of my product list, it really should be suggested like that. And the other thing that we need to do is in start, instead of starting at one, for this array, it really needs to start at zero. So then, let's go ahead and check this in. So I'll go ahead and add everything. And we'll go ahead and commit this. Fix bug. And let's go ahead and push this back up to GitHub. Of course, once I push this up to GitHub and the code hits GitHub, it should kick off my action. Now, while it's kicking off the action, I, I think you made an important distinction. I want those watching this. 
the GitHub Actions are for automation of, of anything GitHub related. So it can be automation of issues. It can be automation of, of other. It's just basically a workflow engine. But what you're showing us is how to use that feature specifically for continuous integration deployment. That's correct. Yep. And like I said, you really can use uh, actions for all sorts of stuff, right? So let's go ahead and jump back into my GitHub repo and we'll click on the actions tab and you'll see that we've already kicked off our action since we just checked in the new code. So here it is and it's running. So let's go ahead and click it and we'll see live in real time everything that it's doing. So you notice in parallel is doing two things. It's building and provisioning uh, my application for me. So I'll go ahead and jump in here so you can see live what it's actually doing. That's pretty cool. And while it's running, let me show you how you can set up, uh, uh, how you can actually configure your action. So what you need to do is in the root of your repo, you're going to have a .github slash workflows directory. And this is where you store your workflow definitions. Now your workflow definitions is YAML. So here's my build and deploy.yaml. Um, the YAML schema is pretty simple. What I'm saying right now is anytime somebody pushes code into my repo, go ahead and kick this off. And I have three jobs. Two of them run in parallel. First is my build, where using different actions, and I love this, right? Using actions is so easy. Basically, you reference the repo name and which version you want to use. And that's it, right? And so the way this workflow works is basically it runs one action after another action after another action after another. So first, I'm going to go ahead and check out my code. I set up NuGet, we store my packages, I build my application, um, and then I publish everything back up to GitHub. So in parallel, I also provision and configure everything that I need up in Azure. Uh, basically, I have a whole bunch of environmental variables that I set, and then I run my infrastructure as code file as a PowerShell command that uses the Azure CLI that provisions everything that I need, right? Including doing advanced things like setting up DNS, setting up HTTPS for me, the whole shebang. Does it have to be a PowerShell? Absolutely not. You can use Bash, you can use Python, you can use whatever type of scripting languages you want. I happen to use PowerShell because I know PowerShell really well and it's just a lot less Googling, right? So if you look at my PowerShell uh, infrastructure as code, this is just a PowerShell script. I pass in a bunch of variables, then using the Azure CLI, I start doing stuff. I log into Azure using my service principle, and then I create my resource group, I create my app service endpoints, uh, I set up my endpoints, I create my app service, I'm just using the Azure CLI to do everything that I need. And um, what's kind of cool is I even set up DNS that's held inside of Cloudflare. And then I set up my certificates for HTTPS as well. So I add custom domain and all of that good stuff in my infrastructure as code file. So now let's go ahead and jump back and see where we're at. So it looks like we're still deploying. So we'll click on deploy and see at what state we're in. And it looks like it finished deploying everything out. So now comes the million dollar test, right? Let's see if this is really working. If we go into my resource group now, we'll refresh this and dun, 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 it created a resource group, fantastic. If I drill into the resource group, we can see that I've hopefully created stuff. And there we go. Here are all the resources that I created inside of Azure. We can go back to the application. Let's refresh this. And bam, there's my application. Hey. And let's see if we actually fixed our bug. Let's go ahead and upload another uh, image. And we'll upload the same multi-tool again. And bam, voila. Oh. oh, one last thing I wanted to show because this is super cool. Check this out right here. Notice the URL I'm using is not an Azure URL. This is my specific domain name because I set up DNS in my pipeline as well. And notice the lock is in the lock state because I set up HTTPS in my workflow as well. So this is what I really wanted to show was using actions. Can you do CI/CD? Absolutely. What can you do in your CI/CD pipelines using Azure Actions, or I'm sorry, using uh, GitHub Actions? Pretty much whatever 
your imagination can figure out, right? Yes, you can build your application, you can deploy your application, but you can even do advanced DevOps things like using infrastructure as code to provision everything you need and set up DNS and set up HTTPS. So what can you do? Again, your imagination is the limit. So two things I love about GitHub Actions is I'm not sure if anyone noticed, but in your script, any type of secret is managed by GitHub. In other words, you're not checking in secrets. You can set up a secret name and configure that out of band so that keeps everything safe and protected like it should be. The other thing is even though I know everyone loves YAML, the fact that it's described in a YAML file means that entire pipeline can be checked in and out of source control and live with the project it's with, which is incredibly convenient. So that is should open a new door for developers who are looking to automate their deployments. As Abel mentioned, sky is really the limit with GitHub Actions and they're plug and play. They're like Lego blocks. If you have to create your own custom action, you can check that in. That can be referenced from other actions and you can compose entire pipelines. Sky is really the limit. So go out, check out GitHub Actions. It's part of your GitHub repo and have fun with that. Thank you.